All right, this is going to be all demo based. Okay. Um, so there's, I think there's three speakers at this time slot. So I have the first 20 minutes. Um, and I don't really remember the title, but I think the gist here is that from uh, a notebook, and I'm using Jupyter in this case, um, I typically use Zeppelin just because uh, it supports Scala pretty well. Um, I've been working quite a bit with more and more data science groups, and they all have this mental barrier with Zeppelin and Scala. And so I've been kind of shifting. And this is a Scala conference, of course, but um, and I'll show some Scala code but as the back end. But from like the actual user interface, uh, I tend to get more engagement from people when I use tools that, that they use. So uh, real quick about me, uh, Chris Fregley. Have this company Pipeline IO. Um, we're building. We're focused more on extending pipelines out to production. So, like a lot of people uh, think of their ML pipelines kind of ending right at the right, like training step. So, we're going to train within um, right, like Jupyter using Spark, but we'll also then t uh, right, like take that, convert it to PMML. So, there's two options. We can convert to PMML and then ship the uh, PMML out to um, a REST endpoint that can read the PMML and, and take inputs from REST. So I've got all that wired up. I'm using Netflix open source for that. I used to work at Netflix, so I have a lot of experience there. Um, I used to work also for Databricks. Uh, that was my job after Netflix. So I, I got to see you know, sort of both sides of, of these pipelines. Um, and I'm trying to take uh, both of that experience and you know combine it and create these high performance uh, servers serving up. So there's PMML. We'll also, if we have time, I'll show code generation happening where we're actually going to take the same Spark model and generate Java code and ship that Java code out, the source code. And then um, yes, on the fly, those servers will really compile the code um, and then swap it in, and then all new predictions will start to run through the new code. So that's actually the focus for Q1 of 2017 for my company is going to be uh, s still supporting PMML, um, right? Because there's a lot of companies using it, but uh, actually generating native code, generating C code, generating really GPU enabled code. So um, I've got a TensorFlow demo as well, but we're not going to have time to do that. So, uh, but yeah, just know if you go to pipeline.io, you'll see all this. And this is all like totally open source, just to make that clear. I, I sometimes forget to say that, and people think this is a vendor thing. Yeah, we don't make money. I, I burn a lot of money, but yeah, we don't actually make any money. So um, I just recently, as a mockery of my old company, um, I'm into mockeries, uh, came up with this uh, kind of fun demo called Data Sticks. It's kind of like Databricks. You can get to Jupyter Notebooks, Zeppelin. Uh, you can get your, your Spark clusters. You can use Airflow. Presto, uh, we can look at the Kubernetes cluster. This is all Kubernetes based. It's all Docker Kubernetes. So this is all reusable. Pipeline IO's deliverables are right, like Docker images that, that you guys can use. Uh, I just got back from the Kubernetes conference this week in Seattle. Uh, sort of the next level of packaging for Kubernetes are called Helm charts. And it's, if you think of it just like package management, right? That, that, uh, but for, specifically for Kubernetes. So, um, haven't gotten to that level yet, but because uh, I just learned about them this week. All right, so here's an example. Um, let's just get right to it. So again, the, the context here, in fact, let me show you guys the cluster. Uh, so I actually have three different clusters. I've got sort of a, a training cluster. Let's see if this works. Uh, I've got a training cluster that, that is where right, like Jupyter um, and these tools live. That's separate from the serving cluster. And I, um, yeah, I've got a surprise for you guys, which is I'm going to deploy to both uh, Google and to right, like Amazon. Um, yeah, so that was something else, too, I noticed when I was, yeah, I switched to Google. Um, at the beginning of the year just because the prices were cheaper and I didn't really have any reason to use any of the Amazon services. I, I just needed uh, right, like VMs and uh, like containers. Um, and I'm going to show, too, that when we start to actually load, I'm going to run a load test against both Amazon and Google, something I didn't expect. Um, but yeah, Google, for the same price, uh, the, sa the, the same instance, 
um, eight core 50 gig is uh, twice as fast when it's actually scoring. So I didn't expect that. This is not, I don't work for Google. I don't really care. But um, at some point, this was talked about quite a bit at, at this Kubernetes conference this week. You can actually, in real time, you know, shift traffic over depending on spot prices and things like that. that that's kind of you know, the goal. I don't have that in here now. But instead of looking at uh, the number of like, requests per second going through, like you can add a second metric that's keeping uh, you know, price uh, per request. Right, and then you can shift over, um, and yeah. So cost savings, right, like throughout the day, kind of thing. It's kind of fun to think about. Um, it's it's a bit of coding and a bit of feedback loops and things, but um, okay. So again, all this, if you go to uh, if you go to Pipeline IO or go to Datasticks.com, the, there's a fork me over here. You can fork and get to the main project. Um, what you'll see is this this project is actually broken up into many different projects. Um, and these all uh, basically map to one tool, uh, which is then one uh, Docker image, right? So here's, yeah, this is Jupyter Hub, things like that. Okay. So is that clear what, what I'm trying to do here? I'm gonna deploy a model and then we're gonna uh, serve it up. The closest competitor really uh, is things like Cloud ML uh, by Google um, or the Azure ML, these services where you, you use their tooling uh, to really generate the model and then you, you know, click something and say deploy it as a REST endpoint, right? That's really the, the segment of the market that uh, we're focused on. Of course, we do support all the, the pipelines leading up to it. And out of the box, we're supporting Spark and TensorFlow. Those are the two that we see the most. Do you produce and consume PMML? Uh, we produce and consume PMML, yeah. Yeah, I was with you at the TensorFlow thing with, uh, yeah. yeah, what's up, man? Um, okay. Uh, yes, and the project that, that we use is the JPMML project, and they, it's this guy Vilu, yes, out of Estonia. Um, I was just up there actually, um, spoke at uh, the Estonia meetup, so yeah, I got to chat to a lot of those guys. So I'm trying to work with him on some of the licensing. It's you know covered under Estonia law, and he's you know, he, anyway. But yeah, he has a, there's a, a tiny loophole with his license. We can get around, so we can talk about that. But uh, yeah, he's done a really good job. I'll show the performance. I mean, it's two, three millisecond uh, scorings for um, the uh, decision tree that, that we're going to use here. So, all right. So I don't yet have nice, pretty buttons and things like that to deploy. I, I keep getting, I keep trying to do that, but I uh, just haven't really gotten around to it. Uh, here's a quick glimpse at the cluster. So I'm, I'm going to show you guys this pretty cool tool here. Uh, it's called Weaveworks. This is to kind of visualize. So this is specifically, this is just the uh, prediction cluster. Um, and this is on Amazon. So this is Kubernetes, uh, the Amazon version. I think I was having problems with the GCP version here, but this, yeah, this is uh, right, like an open source tool. It's called Weaveworks. You can actually, from here, hop right into the Docker containers, which is really cool. So you can actually go in here if you're trying to like debug something or figure out. Uh, you, you can click this just to get the logs, or, or you can actually hop right in. Um, you can pause, you can look at you know, the environment variables. It's actually showing top and things like that. Here, let me zoom up. Has uh, you know, some, some top stats for the different processes. Um, I right, like, try to stick to one process per uh, right, like Docker container, kind of a Docker best practice. Um, but yeah, this tool really, really helps out quite a bit. Okay, so let's go back here. So this is just to kind of explore the surroundings. I'm um, going to switch over here. This script gets us over to Google. We can look at what's running over there. The end result is us, we're, we're going to be using this particular dashboard. I'm not, there's no load coming into it now, so, um, but yeah, there's a uh, like Docker container that I'm going to deploy that's going to start up a load test here in a sec, but first let's actually build the model. Okay. Can you guys see that? I'm pulling uh, this data set I just put out there. I, I, have, I created an S3 bucket called Datapalooza. It's got the uh, popular R census data set. Uh, it takes a bit to you know, load Spark and that kind of thing. 
but yeah, this is the code here. So I'm using R formula, right? Like again, just to appeal to some of the, the R heads out there. Um, we're gonna predict income from all these other attributes and we'll see those here in a sec when it pulls in the data. Um, and we're gonna build a tree, we're gonna build a pipeline. Uh, so, right, like this is the whole key to what we're doing here is building a full PMML pipeline. So not, not just the decision tree itself, but right, yes, any feature like transformations that would be happening, any normalization, standardization. Uh, the JPMML Spark ML package, let me just show you guys this because it actually is pretty integral to the way that we're currently uh, relying on PMML. I, um, I have not used that one yet, but yes, that, yeah, that's totally another option as well. So this is, yeah, this guy Vilu, if, if you just look at the, uh, this is, I guess, like an organization, he's got a lot of stuff here. Yeah, so he can take your scikit-learn and, and then convert it to PMML. Um, R, yeah, he's got XGBoost support. This is the one that we're using today because of Spark. Um, just to give you guys a quick glimpse, these are all the features. So there's kind of this, folklore going around the you know, PMML world. I, I, because this project has been um, there for the last few years, people have kind of you know, popped in and out of it. And um, at the time, it, it was not full featured. Um, but I, I pretty much haven't had any problems. Um, all the models that we build, this is pretty much everything within Spark, the feature package within Spark. These are all supported. Uh, here's the classification. Here's uh, the regression, you know, clustering, things like that. Uh, the thing that is glaringly missing here is recommendations, because that's how right, like a lot of us view you know, machine learning. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Um, typically, when you're generating recommendations, you're populating tables or populating caches. That's how Netflix works. They do a big offline, and then for every user, that's the key in this database, then they write uh, you know, the top 500 movies that they're going to show the next time the person logs in. So there, there really isn't much benefit. Um, to right, like representing that, you're, you would just basically be building up a database in PMML, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, so for that, actually, there's another path we use uh, uh, that's part of this um, right, like data sticks thing here, where we actually populate Redis and then have distributed Redis out there, and, um, which is very similar, right, like again, to how Netflix does it. And then we have the REST uh, services that are in front of it that, that call into Redis. Okay. So, that kept me in to talk to you, actually. So we will talk. Okay, I have five minutes. So let's get to this. Oh, looks like I did a collect here. Oop. All right. A lot of data. Okay, so here we actually build the model. There's this cool, a method called to debug string. If you guys don't know about this, this is actually going to print out the tree in, uh, hey, in uh, yeah, nice, pretty printed form. So you can actually see the split points and things like that. Kind of gives you some human grokkable way to uh, think of this stuff. Here we're going to convert it to PMML. Um, here's where we're actually going to do. So there's two ways to uh, like deploy this PMML. You can uh, Take your existing cluster and push it out. So there's a REST endpoint that would normally be hidden, but yeah, here it's public. Um, we're we're going to swap in the uh, PMML that gets generated. So that's so here's the pretty printed model. Uh, it's decision tree classification model package or the class name within Spark. Here's the the split points. Uh, these feature numbers mean something. Um, you know, stored yes internally by Spark. The uh, like PMML knows about these when it gets generated. So let's generate the PMML. It should print it out. There's our favorite. Yeah, we got the XML, right? Like, yes, everyone hates XML. Um, and here, let's deploy it. And what did I get here? RHEL open. OK. So yeah, so that would normally deploy it. but. It's already, uh, so the second option is we would commit it to, let's see if I can, let's see, this should work up. Oh, that didn't work. I didn't test these two right before. Okay, the, so the second option is you actually write it out to disk and then commit it. Oh, I changed a whole ton of stuff here, boom. 
to the phone I found. You would commit it, and then once it goes into GitHub, it would trigger um, a Docker build, and which would slurp in this new model and then deploy it. Uh, and it's set up to deploy as a canary, right, like alongside. So if you have a thousand current servers running, and then now you're going to deploy the canary, and the, the piece that we're working on is the tooling to give data scientists from the actual right, like notebook itself to actually see the production canary and see how it's performing, right? Like not just system metrics, but also performance metric or er, uh, prediction, uh, like performance metrics, right? Like alongside the other nodes. Um, and then from that point, then they could scale it out. Uh, so we could scale out here. Um, so this is actually, this is working. I, some of this stuff's a little bit janky here, but let me start the load test and we'll flip over. We should start seeing some load pop up here. So these are our live. So yeah, this is basically where things would have come in. Uh, this Docker container would have been deployed. This is just one node right now. Um, so here's Google on the bottom. And here is, uh, this is Amazon on top. This is the performance. Right now there's just one, there's one uh, server out there. We can scale that up here in a sec. But yeah, if you notice, I just want to show you guys single node uh, performance here. Let me, boom, boom. So we got Google on the left, Amazon on the, or yeah, we have Amazon on the left, Google on the right. Uh, you could see the times here. Okay, so it's a bit similar right now, but um, about three millisecond for the 90th, 11 millisecond. So, but yeah, we're pushing right, like almost 2,000 uh, like requests per second. And actually, this is limited by the load test because it's actually flattened out there. So, and then with one command, we could scale it up. Scale it out. Is it time? Yep, it's time, sorry. Okay, it's time. And we could actually see on our nice little uh, weave scope thing here, we could see uh, containers. This should scale up here in a sec. We'll see. See four of them come online, I believe, or five total maybe. So, yeah, that's it.